When setting up an enclosure for a reptile or amphibian, most people choose to use plastic plants and resin hides in order to decorate it. Now, I am actually really strongly of the opinion that this is not the best way to go about things, and that in order to truly achieve wild recreation, you can't just use a bioactive substrate, you've got to go into using natural decorations, such as cork bark, branches, and real rock, rather than using man-made materials. So in today's video, I'll be discussing the merits of natural decorations and also some of the hidden dangers of man-made products that you maybe haven't thought of. Now, as we get into the video, please leave it a like, do leave me a comment and also subscribe to my channel so that you never miss an upload. But with that, let's get into the video. So one thing that people really do tend to overlook is the fact that plastic and resin are ultimately made from crude oil or petroleum and as such they are petrochemicals. Now basically what this means is that if they're heated up they're going to release VOCs which stands for volatile organic compounds and these volatile organic compounds can be absolutely destructive to the respiratory systems of our animals. Considering the fact that pretty much all of the reptiles we keep live in heated environments they are basically being trapped in boxes with volatile organic compounds that have the potential to destroy their lungs. Now, I do appreciate that that sounds kind of dramatic and that millions of reptiles over the years have been kept with like plastics and so on and people haven't found them to go on to develop respiratory infections. But then you've got to consider the fact that the reptile hobby is such an infant one um, and it could be the case that we are like shortening our pets' lifespans by keeping them with these items and we just don't know it because they haven't been kept in captivity for long enough to tell. So however drastic the impact of VOCs from plastic plants and whatever might be, what we can say is that you aren't going to get the same volatile organic compounds coming out of natural decorations and so that is definitely a benefit. It's like there could be a problem with the alternative, so you may as well just avoid it and go natural. Staying on the topic of heating, I do want to talk about one of my favourite properties of natural decorations and that is their heat retentive abilities. So in particular, real rocks and especially dark coloured ones like slate are capable of storing a large amount of thermal energy, which means if you're using an overhead heater, which is something I've talked about in the past because it is a far better way to heat like any reptile, um, then the heat coming from above is going to be absorbed by that rock and you're still going to get the so-called belly heat effect that everybody's obsessed with. Of course, the downside with rock is that it is really quite a dense material um, and like slate's quite dense. So if you've got like a viv rack or something, then putting loads of rocks in each enclosure might not be a viable option because they are so heavy. Now, I do have a viv rack and I'm trying to keep weight down and so on. Um, and so my personal preference is to actually use slate tiles. Now, obviously, in trying to make bioactive enclosures, using like rectangular slate tiles doesn't look very nice. Um, so what I actually do is chisel them to more appealing shapes. To do this isn't actually very difficult. Um, all you've really got to do is make sure that you like just start out by like scratching on a sort of rough outline of what pieces you want to achieve. Then support the pieces that you want to keep underneath with like a brick or something and then just chisel away um, as you'll see me doing in these video clips until you get a sort of rough piece that you want. It doesn't have to be exact, just like get something that's sort of roughly a nice natural shape. Um, if you try and make it like too exact then it probably won't look natural um, and once you've done this if you choose, you can like layer them up in a stack like I've done for my bearded dragon and you get that nice surface area of rock in there without taking up loads of volume inside the enclosure and without weighing it down too much. Another thing that people tend to overlook is the bonus of textures. In like a sterile box, there isn't really like much with any texture on it to allow an animal to like shed properly. So snakes can't rub up against things, lizards can't rub up against things in little boxes. But in a naturally decorated bioactive enclosure, there's all that substrate for them to roll around in and cork to rub up against. And that does just make the shedding process so much easier for them. Plastic plants and resin hides and the like do provide a sort of surface to aid shedding, 
but they aren't like naturally textured, there's no real roughness to the edge of them, and so while they help, they just simply aren't as good. Now an enormous benefit of using natural decoration, and particularly within a bioactive enclosure, is that if any of your reptile's food starts eating the decoration, it isn't going to pass up the food chain and harm your reptile. Now the best example I can give of this is that with polystyrene backgrounds, like the ones that you get in exoterra enclosures, insects seem to love eating them. Now, if you've got a bioactive setup, you are guaranteed to have invertebrates running around the enclosure, and at some point, they are going to start tucking into that background. If your reptile then starts eating members of the cleanup crew, which is usually completely harmless, they are basically going to be ingesting polystyrene on a secondary basis, which could build up in their system and could do some real damage. On the contrary, Cork bark is not particularly um, palatable, as I'm sure you could, un well, to be honest. Is polystyrene palatable? Cork bark backgrounds and so on aren't as palatable, it seems, to our invertebrate cleanup crews, and so the chance of like secondary consumption isn't really there. And even if it were, this is a natural product that these detritivores that make up our cleanup crews, they could probably digest that anyway so that your reptile isn't going to be ending up eating little pieces of cork. More directly, using live plants rather than fake ones takes away the risk of omnivorous and herbivorous reptiles from consuming fake plants, which, as I'm sure you could guess, can cause rather large problems. Now more to the point, giving herbivorous and omnivorous reptiles live plants in their enclosures for the sole purpose of them to like dig the plants up and eat them might seem like a lot of work and a lot of expenditure on our part, but for them it is a lot of mental and physical enrichment, and you simply aren't going to get that if you just use fake plants. And you know what, this is a fun one so I'm just going to chuck it in there. Um, natural decorations are all original. Trees don't grow their branches to follow set dimensions, cork doesn't grow to set dimensions, rocks aren't formed to set dimensions, and so any bioactive and naturally decorated enclosure you set up is going to look really unique and really nice, unlike if you just go and use another one of those damn exoterra medium reptile caves that everybody seems to have a million of. But yeah guys, that pretty much sums up the benefits of using natural decorations, and I'm sure that you can tell there is a lot more to it than just the fact that they are natural. Man-made materials such as plastics can wreak absolute havoc by releasing volatile organic compounds, causing damage through secondary consumption, and then causing even more damage by primary consumption from herbivorous reptiles trying to eat fake plants. And of course, it has got to be said that having an original, unique looking enclosure, rather than just a carbon copy of everybody else's using the same resin hides, is kind of nice. So anyway, if you did enjoy this video then please leave it a like, please give me a comment telling me that you enjoyed it or what you learned from this episode, and also subscribe to my channel so that you never miss an upload. But anyway, this is it for now, and I'll see you in the next one. So keep following nature's example, and I'll see you then. Bye guys!